What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. In Fortnite, having crazy mechanical skill, at least in the eyes of many players, is the pinnacle of improvement. It's been clear over time that while a bunch of factors can contribute to your success in this game, mechanics, aka your building and editing, probably top the list as the number one skill everybody should be looking to improve on. So that's why in today's video we'll be doing an updated guide on the best methods to improve your mechanics in Fortnite Chapter 4. This video should cover everything you need to know in order to get started and improve your mechanics dramatically. Before we get into today's video though, if you're interested in literally getting getting free V-Bucks, skins, and gaming equipment by playing Fortnite, then let's talk about Buff. Buff is a free app authorized by Overwolf that runs in the background of your PC while you play and gives you various challenges to complete within Fortnite to earn their currency, which is called Buffs. Buffs are usually earned through your regular gameplay, so you can choose whether to actively work on your challenges or just get some games in and let Buff perform its magic in the background. Once you earn Buffs, you can redeem them for all sorts of stuff like gift cards for companies like Steam, Apple, Nintendo, and Amazon, game keys for games like GTA 5, Minecraft, and others, gaming equipment from Razer, or even redeem your buffs for V-Bucks within Fortnite. Another awesome detail is that buff not only works for Fortnite, but you can also earn buffs with tons of other games like CSGO, Valorant, PUBG, Apex Legends, even Minecraft and Fall Guys, and many more. Buff is completely safe as they're a partner of the gaming team NRG, they're authorized by Overwolf, and they're trusted by over 7 million players. Best of all, buff is completely free and it barely takes up any of your PC's resources, so it won't interfere with your gameplay at all. All in all, buff is literally free stuff just for playing Fortnite. It doesn't get much better than that. If free stuff sounds like a good deal to you, then you can sign up and get a bonus of 100 buffs to get a head start just by heading to my link, which is near the top of the description, and signing up. Thank you, Buff, for sponsoring today's video, and without further ado, let's get into improving your mechanics. So for the first part of this video, we're going to be covering one of the most consistent methods to improve your mechanics in Fortnite, and that's Peace Control. For those of you who don't know, Peace Control is basically the act of using your builds and edits to control the fight, with the ultimate goal of getting your opponent boxed up in your builds or otherwise stuck. Since it involves high levels of both editing and building, improving your Peace Control is a fantastic way to improve your overall mechanics. In order to improve your peace control, the method I'm going to recommend is the map by Raider464, which is Raider's peace control map V3. This map has an absolute boatload of different peace control scenarios ranging all the way from beginner to advanced difficulty. You can see a few of these scenarios in the background footage right now. What I recommend for this map is trying to get a good variety of practice in each time you get on. For example, each time you hop on the game, do a little warm-up free build or whatever you want to do, and then hop into Raider's map. Then pick out a handful of scenarios, preferably around 3 to 5 scenarios, and run them for about 5 minutes minutes each. You won't need to worry about running out of space since the scenarios pretty much run infinitely and they reset after a while. This will get you a good variety of practice and overall improving your peace control is a fantastic way to get better mechanics in Fortnite. If you want to use Raider's map I'll have the code up on screen right now so you can check it out. This is a fundamental map when it comes to improving your mechanics so I definitely recommend you put some solid time into it. Moving on from that we're actually going to be getting straight into another map by Raider464 which is Raider's mechanics map v3. This map is pretty much an all-around mechanical training map that helps you improve some of the intricate details of your building and editing. For example you have the crosshair training section where you're basically meant to select an edit and edit it in the most efficient way possible as shown by the red lines. By minimizing your mouse movements when you edit, you're able to edit much faster and more consistently. Think of this section as kind of like an aim trainer for your editing. Another section I love here is the peak training section where you have to do the most optimal peak or else you get hit by the sentry. If you peek against the sentry for too long and you're visible to it, then you're going to get shot, which means you have to be smart about how you edit and go for peaks, which can help a ton when it comes to peeking against real players in the real game who obviously want to shoot you. Those are only two of the sections in this map, but the map also has box fight training sections, free build sections, and much more. It's a fantastic map overall, and spending some solid time in here can definitely help you get better mechanics. So with that said, I'm going to put the code up for Raiders Mechanics map right now. There's a lot in this map that I didn't cover in this section because it's a really big map, so it's definitely worth giving it a shot, and if you play it consistently, it should seriously help you out. There's a ton of awesome stuff I didn't cover, so I recommend you guys check out the map. Moving on from that, another method I recommend for improving your mechanics is a relatively simple one, which is free building. Free building is exactly what it sounds like. You jump into a creative map and you do a bunch of random builds. Generally, I like to free build a bit when I first get on the game. It's a pretty good warm up before you jump into actual matches, and another thing I like to do is, once I'm reasonably warmed up by doing random builds for a little bit and stuff like that, specifically focus on one move I'm struggling with. For example, if you have a certain retake you've been working on, maybe get warmed up and then do that for a while. Or maybe you're trying to learn double or triple edits, etc. This is a really good way to not only get a good warm up and get some randomized mechanical practice in, but also nail down some really useful techniques while you're at it. Personally, I just head into my own creative map to free build, but you can also use pretty much any regular 1v1 map as well. Freebuilding has been a common method to improve mechanically for a long time, and that's for good reason. If you free build consistently, you should see some very significant improvements in your mechanics just by doing that for a while each time you hop on the game. 
Moving on from that though, and next up we've got fighting practice. Fighting practice is basically any form of fighting in creative. This can include zone wars, box fights, realistics, build fights, or pretty much any other number of things. What fighting practice allows you to do is take all of your mechanical skill and use it all at one time just like you would in a regular fight. All the other methods I've talked about are fantastic, but fighting practice is really the cornerstone of improving your mechanical skill. Although a lot of the raw mechanical skill you build up is going to be through practice maps, it's very hard to deny the value of having those mechanical skills and actually being able to apply them in higher pressure situation and adapt your mechanics to the moves that other people use, which is why this is such a fundamental piece of improving your mechanics. In particular, I recommend you try to do these 1v1s and other fighting practice against players that are your skill level or better. What I found is that fighting against players who are better than you at the game really forces you to adapt and learn how to counter their advanced moves. Of course, these same concepts apply to playing something like arena or tournaments, and that's why I always recommend people grind arena and tournaments in order to improve as well. It's kind of just a given, so that's why I didn't mention it. That being said, it's really hard to understate how much more you improve by going against someone better than you in 1v1s compared to going against someone you can easily beat. I think a large part of the difference is because when you play against somebody of a higher skill level, your mistakes are immediately pointed out. If you slip up at all, chances are they're going to punish you for that and you're much less likely to do it again. And if you guys need to find people to practice against in fights, feel free to join my Discord server, which is going to be linked somewhere in the description. All you need to do in there is select your region and then you're going to gain access to a specific looking for group chat where you can find people for whatever you need, whether you need teammates for arena or tournaments, people to 1v1 or anything else. So if you need any of that feel free to check out the server once again the link is going to be in the description getting into our last section for today's video though and the final thing i want to talk about is keybinds and settings there's no doubt that keybinds and settings play a crucial role in your mechanical skill after all these are the buttons that you literally have to hit every single time you do something mechanical now as you might expect it's hard to give a blanket recommendation in this video because i don't know whether you're on controller or a keyboard or what your exact settings are however the biggest tip i would give all of you here is to not be afraid to adjust your settings i know it may be a bit intimidating to change something like a build or edit bind or anything along those lines simply because you might suck at the game for a few days afterwards but it really does take less time than you might think to learn new binds uh, sensitivity or dead zone different settings or whatever might apply here the only thing you want to avoid is constantly changing around your settings looking for the perfect stuff the truth is that although your settings and binds are important it really only holds you back if you're constantly changing them so don't be afraid to change things up if you find that something is holding you back but don't spend too much time looking for perfection but with all that said guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to improve your mechanics fast in Fortnite Chapter 4. Overall, by consistently using all the practice methods and strategies I've gone over in this video, you should see some major improvements in your mechanical abilities and in turn win much more fights and be much more successful regardless of what your goals are in Fortnite. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you're new to the channel and want to see more content just like this in the future. I'm grinding out tips and tricks videos pretty much every single day right now, so if you don't want to miss out, be sure to hit that notification bell as well, that way you'll get notified whenever I post. And of course, if you want to show some extra support, it would really mean a lot to me if you could use code Teco in the item shop. It's 100% free for you and it seriously helps me out a ton. Thank you so much to everyone who's using it. And lastly, if you're looking to get free items for literally playing video games, then be sure to check out our sponsor, Buff, which is going to be linked near the top of the description. With all that said, though, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.